This video is going to look at some examples of differentials and also looking at how to calculate propagated error. And the first thing we want to look at is how can we evaluate and compare delta y and the differential dy? And to do that, first of all, we have an example y equals 6 minus 2x squared, x equals negative 2, and of course delta x, which is going to be equal to dx, is equal to 0.1. So the first step is we want to look at calculating delta y. And we know that delta y is going to be equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. So that means we're going to take f of uh, negative 2 plus 0.1 minus f of negative 2. So we would have f of negative 1.9 minus f of negative 2. And if we take and evaluate this in our function, then we would have 6 minus 2 times a negative 1.9 squared minus 6 minus 2 times negative 2 squared. And if you perform the calculations, we end up with delta y is equal to 0.78. So now we want to look at what is dy. Well, in order to calculate dy, remember that that's going to be equal to f prime of x dx. So for us, that means we're going to have dy is equal to, well, first of all, what is f prime of x? Well, over here, if we calculate f prime of x, 6 is 0, so then we have negative 4x. So over here, f prime of x, then our x value is a negative 2. So if we plug in a negative 2, we're looking at f prime of negative 2 times dx, which we know is 0.1. That's the change in our x. So then dy is simply f prime of negative 2, so we're going to plug negative 2 in. So negative 4 times negative 2 times 0.1, dy is equal to 0.8. And we can see here if we compare that to delta y, that is extremely close. All right, here we have a couple examples of how can we find the differential dy given the function. And basically here, all we're doing is simply taking your derivative uh, for the most part. We're taking the derivative of y, so if we're looking at dy, then 2 thirds times 3 would simply be 2x, and 2 thirds minus 1 would be negative 1 third. And the only difference here now is if we're looking for the differential, we're going to multiply this by dx. And that is our differential dy. So the only difference from what we've done before, when we took the derivative in the past, we would say, well, this is dy dx is equal to 2x to the negative 1 third. But if we want to find this differential dy, all we're going to do is take the dx and move it and multiply it to the other side. Okay, here we have another example. y equals cosecant 2x. So if we want to find dy, then we're going to take the derivative of cosecant 2x, which would be a negative cosecant 2x cotangent 2x. And remember, we need to multiply all of that by the derivative of 2x, which would simply be 2. So we would end up with negative 2 cosecant 2x cotangent 2x. And then of course we need to do what? This is going to be multiplied by d 
dx. So there's our differential dy. So really this is no different than taking the derivative other than we're going to multiply by the differential dx. All right, next we want to look at what's called the propagated error. And this is taken into account if you're looking at measuring something. Uh, for example, uh, if x is equal to the measure value, and if x plus delta x is the exact value, and delta x is going to represent the measurement error. Okay, so in other words, if you go out and you measure something, of course, the exact measure may be x, and we know based on your instrument or the tool that you're doing the measurement with, uh, there's going to be some type of error. So the exact value would be x plus delta x. And then if we take that value, our measured value x, and we plug that in to evaluate that in some other function, uh, such as f of x, then we're going to end up with f of x and then f of x plus delta x. If we take and subtract this f of x plus delta x, the exact value, minus f of x, the measured value, this delta y is the propagated error that we're talking about here. And here we can use dy to approximate this delta y, the propagated error. So if we apply that to this example below here, it says that the measurement of the radius of a circle is 16 inches with a possible error of 1 fourth inch. So here we're measuring the radius of a circle and of course, based on our tool, we could be off by a quarter of an inch. And for part A, it says use differentials to approximate the possible propagated error in computing the area of the circle. So we want to figure out what is the possible error here that if we compute the area of a circle based on the fact that we have a possible error of a quarter of an inch when we measured the radius. Because we know that if we're trying to find the area of the circle, we know area is equal to pi r squared. And we want to know what's happening if we have a possible quarter of an inch error in the radius and then if we go to calculate the error, that's the area, that's going to give us some type of error in the area that's calculated. And we want to know what is this propagated error going to be. So what we're looking at is, first of all, we know that the circle has a radius of 16 inches. So R is equal to 16 and delta r, which we can think of that as our dr, that's going to be the same. And dr, we know, is going to be a possible error of a quarter of an inch, so that could be plus or minus a fourth of an inch. So if we're going to use our area formula here, we know area is pi r squared, then we can find the derivative, this dA, and this is going to be used to find our propagated error. So the derivative would be 2 pi r, and then of course we're going to multiply this by dr. So if we plug in our values here, then our propagated error is going to be 2 pi times the radius, which is 16, multiplied by dr, which would be a plus or minus 1 fourth. And of course here that would be 2 times a fourth is a half times 16, so that's 8. So this would end up being equal to plus or minus 8 pi and this is, our unit was inches, so that would be plus or minus 8 pi square inches. And this here is the propagated error.
And once again, what this is talking about, this is talking about this propagated error up here of delta y of f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And we're using dy to approximate that. The second part of this problem says we want to approximate the percent error in computing the area of the circle. Well, to do that, we want to look at, first of all, calculating the relative error. Well, the relative error is simply equal to dA over A. Well, dA, we discovered up here, was 8 pi over A. Well, if we calculate the actual area, then here, the area would be equal to pi times the radius, which we know the radius they told us was 16 inches. So that's area equals pi times the radius 16 inches squared. So if we plug that in here, we would have 16 squared times pi. So you're taking dA over A. And this would simplify the pi's would cancel. So 8 and the 8, uh, we could cancel this and reduce to 1 over 32, which would be 0 0.03125. And then, of course, if we want the percent error, we would simply multiply that by 100, and we would end up with 3.125%. So this gives you the percent of error that you would have when we compute the area of this circle, given that there's a possible error of a quarter of an inch when we calculate the radius.